Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, I recently built a new PC and this time I told myself to just enjoy it for what it is. I didn't want to overclock anything or mess around with tweaks, but like on several other occasions, I ended up breaking this promise to myself. If you watched the previous video, you'll know I decided on a Radeon RX 5700, a slightly cheaper and weaker baby brother of the 5700 XT. As I sat there installing some games and admiring my new purchase, I started thinking about some of AMD's graphics cards of years gone by and how GPUs like the R9 290 and Vega 56 could be flashed for better performance. For example, the R9 290 could be flashed with a R9 290X BIOS, which in turn would give you a slight performance gain. So naturally, I started wondering the same about my 5700 here. Could we flash it with a 5700 XT BIOS for some sweet FPS gains? Well it turns out you can. Now I don't recommend it and certainly not with a reference design card with a single blower fan, but I just couldn't move on with my life if I didn't try it. So I guess we're doing this. Let me just show you that the 5700 is indeed installed. Here it is in device manager paired with the Ryzen 3600 and 16 gigs of DDR4. I'll also show you the card in GPU-Z here, which will demonstrate the specs and clock speeds. This MSI card is clocked at 1465MHz with a boost speed of 1725. It features 2304 shaders. Flashing the card with an XT BIOS will increase these speeds, but it's always worth taking into consideration what could be achieved with standard overclocking before doing this, as well as other less permanent solutions like the PowerPlay Tables mod. With this, you don't have to reapply your settings every time you update the drivers or remove and reseat the card, but it is a lot riskier. Anyway, let's begin. So first things first, I made a backup of my 5700 BIOS in GPU-Z, and then downloaded the 5700 XT BIOS from the Tech Power Up website, as well as ATI Flash, which as of mid-August, supports the new Navi 10 cards. From there, it was just a matter of opening the ATI Flash program, loading the downloaded VGA BIOS, and clicking the Program button. One restart later, and lo and behold, we now have a Radeon 5700 XT, according to Windows and such anyway. The shader count will of course remain unchanged, but the speeds have increased. I didn't do any further overclocking as this is the reference card. It wasn't really wise to flash this model anyway. It will be interesting to see what sort of performance gains we see without touching any other settings though. Firstly, the stock temps stayed at 34 degrees idle, which was a good start, but the low temperature when running the very intensive superposition GPU benchmark went from 73 to 90, and the fan noise went from meh, it's not that bad, to hmm, who's fired up that vacuum cleaner inside my head? The superposition score at the end of this audible adventure was increased though, as well as the frame rate. So how does this equate to real world gains in gaming situations? Well first up, it's the Far Cry New Dawn benchmark run. Here is how the game performs with the out of the box 5700. This footage was taken before we flashed the BIOS. We're seeing an 83 FPS average at 1440p with 1% and 0.1% lows of 66 and 57 respectively. After the flash we weren't really seeing any difference. We gained 3 FPS on average, but that's about it. The percentile figures were around the same. However, in Dirt Rally 2.0 things were a little different. See this game seems to be more graphics card dependent. A good GPU will be more beneficial here than a good CPU. And this shows in the results. Here we were getting 139 FPS on average with percentile figures of 114 and 70. When we look at the flashed result, the average figure has increased to 147 and the other numbers read 120 and 84. Kingdom Come Deliverance also saw an improvement. The stock card gave us figures of 83, 52 and 31. KCD has actually seen quite a few performance patches over the course of its existence and is far better optimised these days. I forgot how good it looks too. With the flashed 5700 we were seeing improved figures of 87, 59 and 46. Again the biggest improvement came with that 0.1% figure. 
In the real world, this just translates into the eradication of some microstutter, which I noticed when exiting Henry's house and walking through the gates to the marketplace. So, despite this risky endeavour seemingly working out quite well, now would be a good time to remind you that this is best done on a card that isn't reference design, as you could then take advantage of further overclocking too, after performing the initial flash. Or you could always spend the extra and purchase the real deal 5700 XT, but where's the fun in that? So with all that said, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. This isn't the usual sort of thing, but um, I was intrigued to see if this would pay off, and I just found it quite interesting. So I hope you guys did too. If you did, leave a like on this video down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.